Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. A few years ago, Richard Horton, the editor of the Lancet Journal, wrote this. The case against science is straightforward. Much of the scientific literature, perhaps half, may simply be untrue. Afflicted by studies with small sample sizes, tiny effects, invalid exploratory analyses, and flagrant conflicts of interest, Together with an obsession for pursuing fashionable trends of dubious importance, science has taken a turn towards darkness. As one participant put it, poor methods get results. In this short video, I'm going to look at a couple examples of personal interest. Forty years ago, I worked as a wilderness ranger at 12,000 feet in the Santa Fe National Forest. My tent was set up just on the other side of the Truchas Peaks. The climate is very cold at that elevation, so there's not a lot of mammals that thrive there. One mammal that does thrive there is the pika shown on the left. On the right is Texas A&M climate scientist Andrew Dessler. Twenty years ago, climate academics in the press started pushing the idea that pikas were going extinct because of global warming. But by the year 2010, this was shown to be not true. March 18th, 2010. In what may be some rare good news amid global warming, the mountain-dwelling American pika, which some predicted might be one of climate change's first casualties, is thriving in the Sierra Nevada mountains, according to a new study. But one year later, in 2011, academics were back pushing the same misinformation about pikas. April 28, 2011. Climate change spells extinction for American pika, research shows. And in 2021, 10 years later, the news was, Pika's now predicted to persist. Although climate change is a serious threat to the survival of many species on Earth, according to a new extensive review by Arizona State University, the American Pika is currently adapting remarkably well. Smith presents evidence showing that American Pika populations are healthy across their full range, which extends from Alberta and British Columbia to northern New Mexico in the U.S. In other words, the academics who are predicting the demise of the pika were simply making things up. This is what northern New Mexico looks like this afternoon at Taos Ski Valley. I think that's cold enough for the pikas to survive. Now let's look at another related scam from 10 years ago. Climate prompts beetle population explosion. Call it the beetle baby boom. Climate change could be throwing common tree killers called mountain pine beetles into a reproductive frenzy. A new study suggests that some beetles living in Colorado, which normally reproduce just once annually, now churn out an extra generation of new bugs each year. NPR said that global warming was making bears hungry in Wyoming and causing pine beetle infestations. But two years later in 2013, the pine beetle infestation in Wyoming and Colorado was over. Western forests get these infestations of pine beetles on a regular basis. They are nature's way of thinning out the forest when humans don't allow fires to burn. You can see what the pine beetle infestation from 10 years ago did here in Wyoming. The forest was too thick, so the pine beetles killed about half of the trees in the forest. The beetles are good for the forest and they're nature's way of compensating for man-made fire suppression. Toto understands this and he wonders why our leading climate academics don't. Toto thinks that pikas are far more credible than climate academics. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, Caesar, Toki, Upala, and the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.